My name is Tiffany Janofsky. I'm a global worker with World Gospel Mission and I call Brookhaven Wesleyan my home church. Have you ever experienced a moment where you're in conversation with someone and you come to the realization that through this conversation, you've been ignorant of something, um, that you were the one that was in the dark or lacked full understanding of a situation? The light bulb moment comes on for you. You've experienced, let's say, enlightenment or illumination to the reality of the situation. You leave that conversation or interaction with more knowledge and more empowerment, really, to be able to take the next steps forward in life with clarity and confidence. Maybe you felt similarly when Jacob, uh, to, to Jacob when he encountered God in a dream. In Genesis 28, this is the first time we hear anything about Jacob's interaction with God. Now we know that Jacob eventually becomes uh, referred to as Israel. We also know that his parents were Isaac and Rebekah. So we can safely assume that he was raised in faith and his parents taught him about the Lord and to follow his ways. But all we really know up until this point about Jacob in chapter 28 is that he's shrewd and deceptive. By the time we read about Jacob's dream uh, with God, he's already stolen his brother's birthright and his father's blessing. We've yet to really hear anything super positive about him, um, nothing that really even makes him a likable guy. In fact, when God meets Jacob in a dream, it's while Jacob is on the run from his enraged brother, a consequence of his latest deception. As Jacob is traveling to un his uncle Laban's family, he stops along the way to take rest before it gets too dark. He prepares a place to sleep and places a rock under his head. Now I don't know if there's anything particularly special about this ground that Jacob has chosen for his rest. Maybe it is a sheltered or covered place where he feels safe and it's an appropriate place to sleep for a few hours. For whatever reason though, Jacob felt that this space was best for rest. But as we read on further in the story, we see that it wasn't only Jacob making a decision in this space. We see that God was also making a decision to meet Jacob in this particular space and time. It's interesting that often it seems God waits until we are still and quiet before we're able to really encounter him with clarity and discernment. It's in this dream that God reveals to Jacob a staircase stretching from heaven to earth with angels ascending and descending back and forth. And God speaks to Jacob. He identifies himself as the God of Jacob's father and grandfather, Isaac and Abraham. And he repeats his promises to Jacob as he had his forefathers. He assures Jacob that he's with him, that he will not leave him, that he'll keep him, and that his promise remains. Jacob wakes up from that dream knowing that he has had a personal encounter with the same God that he's heard of secondhand for years from his forefathers. He says, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. I love Jacob's vulnerable honesty in admitting his own ignorance to the Lord and that he was the one that did not have the eyes to see that God was already present he was already working, still fulfilling his promises. Jacob didn't say, oh, funny meeting you here. Thanks for showing up, God. Glad you could finally make it. No, he fully acknowledges God's omnipresence. And once Jacob found God in his heart, he then found God everywhere. We hear this theme echoed throughout the Bible, specifically in Psalms. David says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depth, you are there. Here in this makeshift space of rest, Jacob laid his head on a rock to sleep in a land called Luz, on the run from his wrathful brother who he had riled up in deception. But it was here in the quiet and in the solitude where Jacob encountered God. He immediately knew that he had been the one in the dark, but now he was walking away from this space enlightened, full of confidence and purposeful, 
having met with a God that builds bridges and stairways from heaven to be in relationship with his people. Jacob renamed the land, calling it Bethel, because God does not require us to come up to his level, but he sets up a stairway from heaven to earth to be with us. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for being a God who creates bridges and stairways from heaven to be with us. We thank you that you sent your son to be the ultimate stairway to heaven so that we could know you. Lord, give us eyes to see how you're working, how you're still here, how you're still fulfilling promises, and that you never leave us. Help us to quiet our hearts and our minds in preparation to encounter you. May we find you in our hearts, and thus may we find you everywhere. Amen. Take time to pray today on your own and to meet with a God who wants to be known in our everyday lives.